Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm your host, Muhammad Hussain, tuning in from Los Angeles, currently volunteering for Wise Islam Southern California. I would like to welcome you all to the Conference 2020, Islam, the Solution in the Time of Confusion. This will be the final session titled, Even Your Voice Shakes. Please also pay attention to two important links ikna.org slash donation and also baraka the first one is definitely we need your help and support and the second one is you can join us at the receive the baraka from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invite our next speaker now everybody knows i think and um yusha evans probably does not need introduction and uh, yusha evans is a currently travels the globe <coughs> as a lecturer and color to Islam, he has been pivotal in establishing Islamic television station in North America as well as uh, as well has appeared in many Islamic stations throughout the world. He also is the multiple discipline black belt holder and runs a full time martial art academy. I present you, Yusha Evans. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Bismillah wa rahmatullahi wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. I don't have very long, so I want to be straight to the point, inshallah ta'ala, before the boat drowns. Now, when you think of before the boat drowns in terms of da'wah, you know my mind is brought to Nuh alayhi salam, or Noah, um, and the time that he lived in. And we can take a lot of lessons in our current uh, 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 world when it comes to the life of Nuh alayhi salam. Um, you know, he preached for a very long time. Very few people listened to him. He took very few people with him. Uh, his, his, you know, his own son didn't listen to him. He built the large ark, uh, you know, to try to save all of humanity. And only a very few decided to listen to his message of Tawheed. Now, before the boat drowns, and this is something that we need to learn in da'wah, and I have always considered this a prerequisite, a prerequisite of da'wah. Because when we look at the Anbiya, all of them, from, from the time of Nuh to Musa to Jesus to our Prophet Muhammad, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may Allah peace and blessings be upon all of them, they all carried this prerequisite with them. And we can see it in their in, in, in their life stories, and it is exemplified throughout the Quran and throughout their life stories that we are told. And you can find it in the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad. And this prerequisite is that you must care, you must care about people in order to be involved in da'wah in an effective manner or in an effective level and for it to be consistent in order to continue upon it in order to be doing da'wah you know for years and years and years and years you need to have this prerequisite of concern for human beings because if we look at the life of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam before receiving prophethood he cared about people he was always trying to find solutions to help his people through the, the, the evils that were in the society. He was always trying to help them overcome these evils. He went to the Treaty of Fudayl. He used to retire to the cave and, 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 and fast and think about you know, the problems his people, his people faced and how he could help them. And this concern allowed him to continue the message for the rest of his life with some genuine uh, uh, um, uh, intention. He even said, you know, that I'm like someone who stands on the edge of a pit of fire trying to call you away from it, holding you by the back of your collarbone, collars, but you keep throwing yourselves into it. If we look at the life of Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam was told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to build this large massive boat. And Nuh knew what was coming. He knew that the destruction uh, um, is, is, is coming to his people. He knew this. He could have saved himself. I mean, look how long he had been preaching his message. And everyone kept turning him down and turning him down and turning him down and turning him down. It did not turn him cold. 
It didn't turn him against people. It didn't make him harsh. It didn't make him hard hearted. He could have easily said, you know what? Forget about these people. I know the destruction is coming. I am going to save myself. No, he didn't. Even though he knew probably that most of these people are not going to listen to him. He knew from all of his life that the majority of these people are not going to listen to me. So I might as well just say myself, but he decided to build the boat anyway. All the effort that it took to build the ark, to build the ark of Noah. He did this out of his concern for people. First and foremost, he did it out of his obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. But also he had genuine concern. This is why he went out after building the boat and called people to come on it. Called people who wanted to be saved. Because he had a genuine care and concern for humanity. And their 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 souls and he tried to get them to understand the message of tawhid so we have now a, a situation where the world is in in deep darkness the world is in deep darkness and it gets deeper every single day we 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 witness this we see this all around us for any of you who are actually plugged in to the real world you realize that the world is getting darker by the day and we know that there will come a time where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will end all of this. He will end all of this and bring this to uh, its final fruition. And we have to have as a society of Muslims, a care about the general world that is around us. A general care about the world that is around us. We have to understand that da'wah is an obligation. This is why I've, I, I, I got into it. And this is why I will stay in, 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 in da'wah in some form or fashion for as long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills for me to remain guided and living and breathing and capable. Um, because it is an obligation. Allah Jalla tells us in Surah Al-Nahl, يُدْعُوا إِلَّا سَبِيرُ رَبِّكَ بِالْحِكْمَةِ وَمَعْعِزَةُ الْحَسَنَةِ Call into the way of your Lord with wisdom and with good speech. Now, if there were no other uh, subjects of da'wah spoken about, if the Prophet hadn't told us to convey, convey for me, even if it's one verse, if he hadn't commanded us during the farewell sermon, if there wasn't so much evidence about the station of da'wah, this one verse from Surah Al-Nahl puts it into clear perspective, its importance and its station. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins it with a general command. A general command, grammatically, the word uh, da'wah, da'a, the root of da'wah, da'a, same as du'a. But Allah has changed it grammatically into the state of amr, a command. Ud'u, the same like when Allah says, Utu zikah, aqim as salah. These are all command words that are commanding you to perform an act of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Da'wah, ud'u, the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his command to do it reaches these same levels. So we cannot shy from it because we will be questioned about it. Anything that is given to humanity as an order, they will be questioned about. Anything that is an obligation, you are going to be questioned about. And your dereliction of duty will be held accountable. And I know there are a lot of people, and I've been, and I've been hearing this for years and years and years now. I've been, you know, doing this da'wah thing now for almost 15 years. And I've been teaching da'wah courses for well over a decade. And I always get the same type of question or uh, concern about da'wah. That yes, Brother Yusha, we understand da'wah is very important. But I don't do it because I don't have time. Uh, I don't do it because I don't have knowledge. I don't do it because I don't have this, that. There, there's something that you don't have um, that, that keeps you from doing it. And my response is always the same a command from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be avoided because of lack of time lack of knowledge lack of ability lack of courage it's the same like salah if i were to tell you that i've been a muslim for 21 22 years but i've never prayed salah because i do not know how to pray i don't have the knowledge of how to pray am i excused no i'm not excused i am sinful I am sinful. If I don't pray because I say I don't have the time to pray, am I excused? No, I am sinful. 
I'm absolutely sinful. If I say, you know, I'm in a public space and I, I, I don't have uh, the courage to pray in front of other people, am I excused? No, you're not excused. You are sinful. Because there is a legal ruling in Islam that anything that is an order, then everything that makes you capable of fulfilling that order is also a command. If Salah is a command, then everything that you need to know in order to fulfill the obligation of Salah is a command. Knowing how, number one, going all the way back to the basics, knowing the rules of Tahara, of purification, is a command. Knowing the rules, the rulings of wudu is a command. Knowing the rulings of the Salah, the Arkan, the pillars of the Salah that is mandatory, is mandatory. Making time for Salah is mandatory. Having courage enough to pray Salah is mandatory. So because of the fact that this is mandatory, everything that comes along with it is mandatory. So if da'wah is an obligation, which indeed it is, then the necessary components for you to have in order to share the message are also obligatory. And that might be different for every person. I'm not saying you need to go and become a global speaker on the da'wah scene. I'm not, I'm not even suggesting you do that. I'm not suggesting you do that. I'm not encouraging you to do that uh, whatsoever. But within your own realm, within your own world, you have to look for the opportunities of da'wah that are presented to you, as well as look for ways to make opportunities and open opportunities to share the message of Islam. Um, and that can be a very simple message. The prophetic example of da'wah was very simple. Qul, la ilaha illallah tuflihun. Say that there is no deity but Allah, and I will guarantee you success. So it was the focus of da'wah has always been on tawheed, and that is the core of da'wah. Anything other than the call to tawheed, is not da'wah. It, it may be partial da'wah or the message or delivering some nasiha, some advice, but it's not da'wah. Da'wah is ud'u illa sabiri rabbika. Uh, this is the calling to the way of your Lord, which is tawheed in Islam. So in order to share some information about tawheed, of course, by default, one must know about tawheed. And that cannot be stressed enough that tawheed must be firmly rooted in every single Muslim, but every single Muslim who wants to do da'wah must have a clear grasp on the rulings of Tawheed and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to his uluhiyya, his rububiyya, and al-asma wa al-sifat, his uh, lordship, his uh, uh, godship, meaning his right to be the ilah, the only ilah, and the only ilah that is worshipped, and his names and attributes. But look for the opportunities to share this message in your daily lives, whether it be you encounter someone on, on a regular basis, you introduce them that, you know, that, that, that Islam is the solution to the problems facing the modern world, which it is. We have no doubt about this. This is an issue of certainty for us, that Islam is the solution to the modern world's issues and problems. But we as Muslims need to have some care and concern for the modern world. We don't need to just sit back and watch it burn, or even worse, wish it to burn and be a part of those who help it burn. We need to be a part of the solution. And we need to be offering realistic, holistic solutions to the problems of the world. For far too long, as I finish in my last four minutes, our da'wah has been completely ideological, which is fine. Ideological da'wah, convincing people mentally, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists and that he deserves to be worshipped. MashaAllah. But what can Islam do for that person? This has always been my question in trying to give da'wah to people is let me show you what Islam can do for you. And I know what it can do for you because I was once a non-Muslim who was on the brink of destruction in my life, the brink of nonsense, the brink of insanity, the brink of all kinds of uh, crime and pestilence. And Islam saved me, alhamdulillah, it changed me into being the person I am today, which I'm not a great person, but I am, I am, I'm a much different person than I was at the age of 17. Let me tell you that. Um, and at least now I wake up every morning knowing my person, knowing my purpose, knowing who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, knowing who my Rabb is, knowing who to worship. That is how Islam can save someone. It can give them purpose and definition in their life. It can change them. That is what we need to be offering to humanity before the boat drowns, before 
the the destruction comes before the 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 sky cracks before the the stars fall before the oceans boil before the day of judgment we need to try within our capacity as human beings as muslims who believe in la ilaha illallah to share that message with as many people as we are humanly capable of doing so and in by doing that and having the intention to do that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for not only obeying his verse but he will reward you for following in the true path of the nba because for sure the one true path of all the nba that they shared beyond most of them were shepherds and they had other things that were in common with them uh, but the one true commonality the one true thread between all of the anbiya was their da'wah to la ilaha illallah they're calling humanity to tawhid in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is the legacy of all of the anbiya that is the legacy of our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the greatest human being to ever walk the face of this earth and that should become and remain the legacy of this modern ummah as it was the legacy of the time of the companions. I thank you very much for your time and hopefully anything I have said has been beneficial in some way. May Allah bless you all. This is your brother Yusha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair brother Yusha Ivan. And inshallah we will after that uh, uh, stay with us. Uh, we will have a Q&A and sister wendy diaz also i ask you to stay with us inshallah